morning and welcome to our online service here at Pulaski Wesleyan Church. We are really glad you have chosen to worship with us here this morning. If you are new or would just like to connect with us here at the church, you can fill out our digital connect card. Go to PulaskiWesleyan.org backslash contact. Please be sure to share this video link or stream by clicking your share button. We would love to know where everyone's watching from. In the contact section below, please fill in your zip code. We want to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. We want you to know that we love you, we appreciate you, and hope you have a blessed and happy Father's Day. If you are unable to turn in your baby bottles for the Pregnancy Care Center, you can still bring them in this week, beginning Monday, the office will have new office hours from Monday through Friday from 10 until 5. On Saturday, July 11th at 9 a.m., we'll be having our next men's breakfast. Guys, we look forward to seeing you there for some food, fellowship, and a short message. If you would like to partner with God through us here at Pulaski Wesleyan Church, there are several ways you can give. You can mail your check to Pulaski Wesleyan Church, 4591 U.S. Route 11. You can give online by going to PulaskiWesleyan.org backslash give, or you can text give to, and the dollar amount, to 315-277-7720. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the service and have a blessed Father's Day. What is this? What? to his own town to register because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary and was expecting a child. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, didn't we all learn something today, guys? Yes, sir.
Psalm chapter 86, verses 1 to 10. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Let's uh, take some time to pray today, shall we? God, our Father, we come before you and thank you that, first of all, we all can call you Father and we all can have a uh, family. For those who don't feel like they have a father or a family today, I pray that you would reveal yourself to them in a very real way. I pray that the, the powerful relationship of God the Father would break down all the barriers in our society and culture today, and that we see ourselves as one race, descendants of one God and one Father. I pray, oh God, today for the uh, fathers in our world, in our society. I pray that those that are seeking to follow your statutes and be a godly father will be blessed and strengthened and encouraged today. And those that have forsaken the responsibility of, as a father, that they would come to a place of repentance and forgiveness and be restored to their children. For those in, uh, in situations where uh, they, they are, are struggling to spend time with their kids because of the messed up things of life, I pray that you would break down the barriers and that they would uh, not allow the situation to become worse, become angry about things but to find peace in God and how to be most effective as a father in difficult situations. And I pray for the children who don't have a father, that you would be a father to the fatherless. And for the, the moms that are raising their kids without the help of a, a husband or the father of the children, I pray for them to find strength for them. And you would be uh, the, the strength they need and, and give them the help. And I pray for churches to come alongside and to help uh, to be the extended family the strong family that we can have in the church. And I pray, God, also for our society, for those who are fighting for fatherhood and for families, that you give them strength, and for the church and for us as individuals to be protected, Lord, because the onslaught against the family, which you had ordained and you had set up, the plan you had for us to be raised in a nurturing relationship with a mother and a father, where it's messed up, I pray, God, that you give us healing in Jesus' name. And I pray, God, that we would respect and honor and thank you for the, the, for the way you set things up for us to have relationships. So now, Lord, we commit to you all the weaknesses and messed up things that we would find uh, in our lives today. And may you interject yourself into them in your powerful way and make a miraculous situation out of something that seems like an impossibility. And thank you, Lord, for every problem we have that we can bring before you today. May our prayers, as they're lifted up on every situation, be, be uh, uh, the incense before your throne. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Happy Father's Day, everyone. I have a little trivia question for you today on famous fathers in history. Can you tell me who James Naismith was the father of or what he was the father of? Basketball, of course, James Naismith. Find out by going to the uh, basketball all thing, which is probably not even open right now. How about this one? I mentioned it last week. I said William Carey was the father of Modern Missions. Thank you. You got it out there. Here's another one. Imhotep. What's he known as the father of? He's known as the father of architecture. If you want to be an architect, you might want to know that. Here's, a, here's one that's interesting. Listen to these names. Vint Cerf and Bob Kahn. Vint Cerf and Bob Kahn. Kahn. Bob Kahn are known as the father of the internet. Vint Cerf. That's pretty cool, all right? Must be where we got the idea of surfing the internet from. Carl Benz, father of the gasoline engine. Mercedes Benz, you've heard of that. Of course, the father of the American car industry was Henry Ford. But today our focus will be on Abraham in the Bible, who's called the father of many nations. Genesis chapter 21, verses 8 to 21. The child grew and was weaned, and on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her, and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. There's a very important character in the Bible named Abraham. He was, uh, his name was changed from Abram to Abraham. You see, Abram meant something like uh, God, uh, the Father or God is exalted. That's a great name. But his name was changed to the father of many nations, which is Abraham, and becomes a very important character. And we're going to read about him today and reference the story a little bit as a father. I'm here to say you can be a great father and still be very imperfect. But let's hear a song about Father Abraham you're all thinking about now anyway.
So over half of the world's religions connects themselves somehow to Abraham as a type of father to them. We know that, of course, the Jewish people and the people of Israel, they trace their lineage back to Abraham through Isaac. And then through Ishmael, the Arab nations do. And he's a key person even to the religion of Islam. You know, Christianity uh, represents 33% of the religions of the world in Islam, like 25, 24%. So you're looking at more than half of the religions of the world look at Abraham as a spiritual father or some type of a genealogical father. Now, there's a lot of pressure on that type of father. Maybe you feel like the same thing sometimes. There's a lot of pressure upon being a father. I've asked some of you this week what you think about that. You know, it is. In this uh, uncertain days and changing world, how to prepare our kids for the future. And as a father, a lot of times people just take the pressure all the wrong way. Sometimes they run away, become deadbeat dads. Sometimes the stress is taken out on the rest of the family. But the best thing to do is to trust the Lord in these uncertain times. And as a father, grow closer to Christ and living Christ, living for Christ um, in a manner which puts him as the Lord of your life. The most amazing man alive. Police often question him just because they find him interesting. He once counted to infinity, twice. His picture is worth a billion words. He is both left-handed and right-handed. It only takes him 20 minutes to watch 60 minutes. He can't judge a book by its cover. He uses Tabasco sauce instead of Bicin. He can speak Braille. He once beat up the man who invented boxing. He once overthrew a third world dictator by making a single phone call. His barbecue ribs are so good, he was given a Nobel Peace Prize. People come from miles around just to watch his beard grow. He was turned down for the lead in Cool Hand Look because he was too cool. He never asked for directions because he is never lost. He had to walk to school. Appeal both ways in the snow, barefoot. There is no loofah in his shower. He uses an SOS bag. He has had a full-time job since he was two. He is not afraid of the dark. The dark is afraid of him. His favorite food is steak. Sometimes he even cooks it. He won the Pulitzer for a grocery list he scribbled out on a napkin. He once was named Man of the Year on January 11th. He does not lift weights. He cannot find any that are heavy enough. He knows what to do with a Klondike bar. He is the most amazing man alive. He is your father. Happy Father's Day, my friends. As fathers, we face a lot of expectations. And so did Abraham. You know, I remember becoming a dad. I had no clue what I was getting into, but I really wanted to be a dad, of course, and looking forward to all that stuff. And, you know, there's just so many things about it as your kids grow that you realize, wow, this is more difficult than I thought. And a lot of you are facing that. I've talked to some people, you know, these are uncertain times, raising your children today. You wonder how will we prepare them? Will I be able to, uh, you know, provide for them? And, and, and through the process, and, and there's a great opportunity to grow deeper in your relationship with the Lord. And I hope that's the case for you. Uh, and so you depend more upon him. So Abraham, he, he had some expectations about him too. Look at this, some things about him. The first thing about the expectations was uh, he was asked early on to believe in things that are very difficult to believe. He was, he was asked to have faith, just have faith. You know, it's funny how we wait around until everything adds up right financially to have kids who probably never have kids, let alone get married or anything else. You just you have kids by faith, believing something will get better, and you have faith. Well, for him, it took a while because God said, I'm going to make a money nation of you. It, uh, and, and it says that, that Abraham believed it, and that's why I said it was credited to him as righteousness because he believed. He didn't get everything right, but he believed in God. So the first thing is we're asked to have faith to be a godly father and that's tough sometimes and we work throughout the process and a lot of times it's what we have men's breakfast and stuff like that to kind of as dads get together and kind of like bounce things off each other and to kind of commiserate together and and not have women around to correct us you know it happened like that the second thing was is this is really powerful was he was asked to be a perfect person 
At least that's what I'm hearing. Is uh, God says to Abraham, hey, I want you to be different. In fact, I want you to walk before me and be blameless. And that's an expectation. A lot of times fathers feel like they've got to be blameless. They've got to get everything right as a husband. They've got to get everything right as a dad. And sometimes that can be overwhelming in the process. Let me encourage you. In Scripture, and Jesus talks about this in the Sermon on the Mount, he says in Matthew, he says, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Wow. That's a challenge. But let me encourage you. First of all, yes, we have a Father in heaven who is perfect. And he is really the only perfect Father. And you can look at this a couple ways. Well, like the, the teacher said, practice makes perfect. But no one's perfect, so why practice? So in other words, don't even try. That's one way to look at it. But you know, my grandfather used to say, it's better to aim high and miss an eagle than to aim low and hit a skunk. And some people are doing that. They just give up. Well, I can't be a perfect dad, so I'll just be myself. And you all just got to accept me where I am. And they don't even try to be a perfect dad. And yet, so the other side of it is you try so hard to be a perfect dad, you're always feeling condemnation and guilt. But the Bible says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But listen, in that, in that passage where Jesus talks about being perfect as your father in heaven is perfect, if you go back a couple of verses, the discourse is about perfect love. To love like your Father in heaven loves. And that unconditional love to give everything you, everything you have, the best you have for your children. To be wise in doing and to discipline your children. That's another thing I'll talk about in just a second. So the idea of, of the expectation of a father to be perfect. Listen, the best thing you can do in your stress and your striving for perfection is to be transparent and admit when you mess up. The idea that you're never wrong and you'll never admit you're wrong will not sell with your kids because your kids see your imperfections. You might as well say, look, I missed it there, but you know my aim is perfection. I want to be a perfect dad and I'm working on it. It may not be what that kid wants necessarily at the time, but it is our goal as parents. So the high expectations that the third thing was, it was to be fruitful. God says, I'm going to make you like the, the sands of the seashore and the stars of the heaven. And I'm going to make mighty nations out of you, many nations out of you. Change this name, in fact, to say that uh, you are the father of many nations. And God did that. But for a long time, it didn't look like it was happening. And God said, be fruitful. We feel like in our lives, we need to produce something. We need to, we feel like we need to, uh, have faith we feel like we need to be that perfect example for our kids and we also feel like we have to leave some type of a legacy and that's a pressure upon us sometimes and there's a th there's a fourth thing we also have to figure out what is the perfect balance in discipline because god says i want you to take all of the young men and your all the men in your in your whole your whole group here all of your servants and i want you to circumcise them now that it was a challenge and not probably not well received at the time and so he was asked to discipline and, and God wanted him to do this to show his obedience. Discipline is always a challenge. There's a lot of expectations about us. Do we do it in a way that is too harsh or is it not strong enough? Are we not consistent enough? And that's all the expectations. And listen, Abraham had all these on him too, yet he is regarded as a great father to many people of the world. God never intends our lives to get messed up. We usually play a role that makes our life messed up, you know, and life is messy. Doesn't mean God's not done with us. Listen to this story. Abraham, like us, God has a great plan for his life. That was to give him a son. Out of that son would come a mighty nation, and out of that nation would come the Messiah, which would bless us and all the world. All right, he said, from you, all the nations of the world would be blessed. And that would be through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Wonderful plan. But like us, many times, we find we get a little bit frustrated with God's timing. No problem with the plan. God has a plan to bless us. God has a plan to give us a ton of abundant life. But the problem is oftentimes the timing or maybe the way God chooses to do it doesn't fit our liking. So therefore we get impatient and we adopt worldly ideas. And one of the worldly ideas they had back then was to have a child through someone else and say it was yours. And that was not God's plan. So she took her slave girl, her name was Hagar, and, and gave her to Abraham. And uh, he he uh, and she conceived with Abraham, and uh, it was nice until this this woman Hagar. She goes from being a slave to becoming the other woman, if you know what I mean, because she got arrogant and prideful that she had a child and Sarah didn't. And so Sarah, at one point in time, she beats her, and in this story, she sends her, has her sent away. 
You see, the other woman, things got messy because of impatience with God. Let's be careful to follow God's plan. And the messiness uh, resulted in all kinds of problems which we're dealing with today. So listen, Hagar, the other woman, and Sarah were all connected to Abraham. Abraham, and he was the father of a messed up situation. The meaning of what it means to be a father goes beyond just your, your family relationship. You know, the, the role in the culture is so powerful. You know, there's all kinds of information about this. Uh, the data supports that, that children from fatherless homes are more likely to be poor, become involved in drug and alcohol abuse, and drop out of school, and suffer from health and emotional problems. Boys are more likely to become involved in crime and girls more likely to become pregnant as teens. Uh, they say to avoid poverty, they've taken again from the census uh, reports they've had, young people can virtually assure that they and their families will avoid poverty if they follow three elementary rules for success. They say 98% of the time, if you follow these three rules, you'll avoid poverty. If you get nothing out outside this message, this is good information that should fly with everyone, regardless of your religious background. Listen to this. It says, uh, if you first of all complete at least a high school education, number two, work full time, and three, wait until age 21 and get married before having a baby. That's put together. Be married and be at least 21 before you have a baby. And you're 98% you're, you're of the time with all those things put together, education, uh, have a full-time job, and be married when you have children. And 98% of the time, you will not fall into poverty. In fact, you, a lot of times they find people who follow this plan, who come out of poverty, end up in the middle class because they follow this. Now, the role of the father is in there in all of this. There's an impact upon everyone as a father. When we look at uh, Abraham, he had an impact upon his servants. They were blessed because he was the head of the household. There was an impact upon Lot, who was, he was given a ch the choice land. He was a nephew of Ab Abraham. Uh, he was, he was uh, delivered uh, from uh, captivity when he was taken captive in battle. And he was interceded for in the story of, uh, of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham interceded for He had a great impact upon not just his own family, but others around him. He also had an impact upon Ishmael. And even though Ishmael ended up growing up without that father, that does play into what became of those nations as opposed to Isaac. Still, he was blessed just because he was he was part he was a descendant of Abraham as God said just because he's your descendant he will be blessed the favor of God upon Abraham extended far beyond his immediate family and then the impact upon Isaac is so powerful that through Isaac God would bring a redeemer a deliverer for you and I so we can become spiritual children of Abraham that is Jesus Christ as I said today the largest religion in the world today is Christianity and it points back to this time when God chose through Isaac to bring the Redeemer for the world. From this messed up story, and the Bible, I love it because it's full of stories of messed up situations. That's what life is like in a sinful world. God still interjects himself into the situation here. And I find, find some takeaways from scripture. It says, first of all, uh, God says to Abraham, don't be bad. I, just, that's the way the word comes out, displeased or, or uh, upset or stressed out. And basically, it's don't respond with evil. You know, it says in, it says in uh, the New Testament in Romans, to not uh, return evil for evil. Uh, the idea of, you know, we should be at peace with all people as much as on our part, we should be at peace with people. So don't respond to others with evil. It's a messed up situation. He could have said, it's your fault, Sarah, it's your idea in the first place. God said, don't do that. He said, in fact, he says, listen to her. Here's the thing. We want to make sure that we, in our actions, we choose to, to focus on being that, that, that person who's blameless. Seek to do what's right. We'll mess up, but seek to do what's right. So he, so he, first of all, is we don't want to be bad. Don't act bad towards your wife and don't act bad towards your son in either way. Don't 
push the blame off and something else. Just find the high road and seek that. The second thing to take away is value your marriage. It's interesting that God says to Abraham, listen to your wife, Sarah. I, 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 oh, he shouldn't have listened to her before, but in this case, he says, do what she asks. I'll take care of it. And I thought, why in the world would he do what she asks? She's the one who got him in this mess in the first place, right? But because I believe God wanted him to value his marriage relationship above all. And that would bring stability into the situation. It's messed up. Listen, statistics tell us that no matter how many times you've been divorced, your best chance of being an answer and being happy with is with the person you're with now. Well, a lot of times we look for the answer in someone else. Your best, your best chance for happiness is not your next wife. It's the one you're with now. I know there's some complicated situations. Somebody might argue with me about that. I'm just saying. But statistically speaking, that's the case because if you've been divorced once, you're twice as likely to divorce the second time. And the numbers increase the more times you're to get divorced, which tells us probably you had some some guilt in this as well. All right. So the point he's making is, look, Sarah was his original wife. She's still there. That should be his priority relationship, his marriage relationship. The third takeaway I get from this is surrender your children. Sometimes you lose impact over them. You lose influence over them. And whatever it is, God is not done with them, even if your influence is done. So he surrendered his child and let God take care of him. And God did take care of him. The last thing is value your impact. Um, because even though he would not be a part of Esau's life and Esau would go on to be a heathen, whatever, the, thing, the bottom line was still the impact of a godly father still impacted that young man and he received blessing from it. So don't don't down downgrade your impact even when you can't speak into it, an adult child's life. Your your fatherhood impact is powerful and lasting. And finally I just want to say that as much as people glorify people like Abraham as a great father and any other father out there. There's only one perfect father, your father in heaven. But that's no, no excuse to get down on ourselves and quit. I just want to encourage you because the impact of a father can be greater than the sum of his mistakes. This is the story of Abraham. His impact, his positive impact is greater than the sum of all his mistakes. God chose that through Abraham and all of his problems and all his mistakes and all the mess he was in, the Messiah came. If you follow the lineage of Christ, there's all kinds of people in there that you and I probably never had chosen as role models. But God used the impact of the father, of this father, to bring out a better impact than all of his mistakes. You see, uh, Abraham's impact today is that Israel is a blessed nation. It's descended from Isaac. Arab nations are descendants from Ishmael, and they are powerful and influential in the world. And more importantly, we are his descendants spiritually. It says in Romans 4, 16, Therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may rest on grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. It comes down to faith. Have faith in God. See, I would say three things in closing this first of all men be a man of faith believe the impossible when it comes to God secondly be a faithful man be faithful in the end when given a choice Abraham was faithful to his wife and then and they also leave the rest that's outside your control to God's faithfulness because sometimes we mess things up worse when we try to play God so let God take care of the things we really can't fix. For whoever you are out there, I encourage you to seek God with all your heart and to follow him and let his grace and forgiveness take your messed up life and use it for a positive impact. That's what happens when we're born in the spirit and come to Christ. Confess your sins. Sure. Be authentic before your children. Receive Jesus as your Lord and follow him. And he will give you the directions to the abundant life. Even in the messed up situations, he'll give you the best way to go. And you can trust him for your future and that of your children. I pray today that'll be your direction as you go. God, in Jesus' name, bless every father and everyone impacted by fathers that we would look to our heavenly father as the perfect one. And we will allow his example 
to live in us and empower us to be better. And I pray that all of our messed up lives, we would surrender to you, that you would be glorified through them as you have time and time again in history. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Father's Day. Good morning, everyone. Pastor Luke here with an important announcement from the Pulaski Wesleyan Church leadership team. I'm sure many of you have been leaving comments here this morning down in the live stream. Uh, some of you have been greeting each other, um, leaving your zip codes, all of those kinds of things. Um, and some of you have been leaving your prayer requests. And we just want you to know that first, those prayer requests are not just being left in the comments section and then forgotten. We have a prayer team that has been collecting those prayer requests and meeting together on Wednesdays to pray over those prayer requests. So your prayer requests are being lifted up to God. Um, and secondly, you know, if, if you haven't left a prayer request yet during prayer time or anything like that, then, you know, take a moment and just type in your prayer request so that we can be praying for each other. Scripture talks about how we can bring our requests and things to the Lord directly and talk to him directly. But scripture also talks about how we need to bear with one another as brothers and sisters in Christ and share each other's burdens. So please leave a prayer request so that we can be praying for you um, together as one body.